Hi, I'm Aidan Rodley. Welcome along to Mainland Matters as we look uh, back on the end of uh, the Grand National Carnival out of Rickard and also look ahead to this week's Oamaru meeting as well, which is on Friday. So catch the action here on trackside as well. Before we get into just going back and recapping a couple of those races, I just wanted to personally thank uh, those involved in sort of basically providing us with superb hospitality to Wallace down in Christchurch for the week from uh, the trainers to the track riders to the track staff, uh, everyone involved in, in uh, at Rickard and in running the meeting and also uh, to our own trackside crew as well who, who did a, a fantastic job as well of being able to bring you uh, that broadcast and uh, it was my pleasure to be down there and part of it and uh, I've got to say I really enjoyed being part of uh, this year's Grand National Carnival. Let's uh, now recap on the final day and the first race we want to take in is the running of the feature and uh, this is just a superb performance, I will mute this uh, on mine. Uh, so this is West Coast, just running a muck really in the closing stages. Uh, Mark Oligan, who had given us uh, really good access on the Thursday at track work as well, said this horse was in great style, jumps to last in, in, in very good style as well, and he comes away for a strong win over Carnby and, and Tittle Tattle. Now, he's just a rising star jumper. Uh, unfortunately, just a field of five, uh, four finishes in the race with uh, Portia Matthews coming off keyboard warrior, but A-OK -okay there. Uh, but that was a really strong performance from West Coast to take out the feature, the Grand National Steeplechase. Next race we want to have a look at is the Heat Store Open Handicap. We'll pick them up here on the bend. Courtney Barnes, who had been ruining her bad luck in uh, running into Lord Darcy in the Winter Cup on the first day. She's opted to stay closer in, uh, moves out wider in the track. You can look here in the pink colours uh, out centre track. That's the stable mate Five Princess, who for a little bit looked as though uh, that he'd be looming up and being a, a contender in this race. But such a game horse, Summer Festival. We've spoken to him about him in the past, just about uh, where he's come from. Uh, GB bred, uh, won an Italian derby, raced in Hong Kong, and uh, now making a real name for himself out of Stephen Marsh's Rickett and Stable as well. And the good thing as well, it was another of our track work shoots uh, last Thursday, and we really just did appreciate the access we got to the Marsh Stable with uh, the girls here, with Alicia Young and, and Hayley Bennett, and, and the team uh, in behind. Uh, the Marsh Stable there. So Summer Festival going really nice, a good run from Five Princes and Miss Tavi another really good run just in behind them. Now another horse I'm just really keen on showing you here is, is Burnview who, who was very good this day. You can see the horse coming out centre track in the gold cap under Lee Calloway prepared by Lance Robinson was settled in sixth position, did early work out wide before tucking in but was still able to round off with the quickest eight, six, four, and two in the closing sectionals and run down face time. Uh, a really nice performance by a horse who's now won three of his last four and looks pretty progressive. That was one of the strongest races on the day. You can see their bluish chance running into third after running such a good race for fourth in the Winter Cup last week and uh, splodge into fifth. So just a really strong form race there coming through from Rickard. And so that's a recap on some of those horses from last weekend. And uh, now it's our chance to, to turn the attention towards Oamadu this week. And I've just picked out one horse for you here who, who I'm really liking as a good chance. Now this is a a 2200 metre maiden, so they can be a touch of lottery type, but I'm going to take you to a rating 65 here on the first day. Now we're looking for the horse here in the blue colours, our centre track, and it's around about six spot in the open as we pick them up on the bend. Now, you're going nowhere in a, in a race where we see King Khan, uh, sort of the forms stacked up really nicely there. So Bailey Adore in the dark blue, under a ride here uh, from Rohan Madhu, 6th, 7th, 8th spot maybe. But this is a rating 65 company, the horse is a maiden, drops back into maiden company this weekend and now look in the closing stages to see where he is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, maybe even ninth at this point. Now look at it really close off, actually picks up the fifth horse on the line to finish into fifth money. A really nice performance from Bailey Adore. And uh, we'll see this horse who is prepared by Mike McCann at Rickard and drop back into a 2200 metre maiden at Oamaru and looks to be awfully hard to beat in that race. So we'll have the coverage for you here on Trackside on uh, Friday as well. Really looking forward to that meeting and being part of the coverage here as well. Um, before we leave, 
Neil Corbeck uh, finished up his training career. He's one of the, the legends of South Island racing, uh, no question at all. And we interviewed him prior to uh, his final run, Zarkat, who nearly brought about the fairy tale, was only narrowly beaten in that uh, race at Rickerton on Saturday. Uh, running second. We, we discussed some of the, the very good horses that Neil's had through his barn, the likes of Woodbine Blue Chip and King Capital Lad. Uh, Decoy Lad, he suggested, being one of his favourites, and one of our favourites who we've closed the show with in the past as well is Covered in Grey. But uh, in honour of Neil and uh, his feats, his fine training career, we're going to take in Fritz's uh, win in the Group 1 Railway Stakes out of Ellerslie going back to 2001. Uh, thanks to uh, you, Neil, for your contribution to racing and uh, to catch us next week on Mainland Matters. In the meantime, here's Fritz. Set and racing in the McDonough Stakes. Good start. O'Malley's boy, one of the first to break. Cullen kicks up to head it off on the inside. Mardan sees Vine is lame. Bo Alexander's now scorching around on the outside. Tracked around by Kaz Manders. Had it kicked up in behind the leaders now. Then followed a length back. Fritz midfield on the rail. They followed Vane Anna, the next one. Tiaka, our dancer, the next one. Followed back behind these now. Is then go. Golden Butterfly. Deep finesse on the outside of it. Followed back then now. Last of all, Travelling Man. And on the outside of it, Star of Gold. They race in 700 metres to go in the McDonough. And the leader is Cullen by about a half length. Babo Alexander second on the outside. Mardan Seuss the next one. Then Viner's Lane. A two back to Derzetta on the inside of Kazman is around the turn. They come two back behind these O'Malley's boy. Fritz on the outside of it. Then Tiak, our dancer back towards the rear with deep finesse. Into the straight. Cullen now rails and rolls out a bit. Babo Alexander quickly after it on the outside. Viner's Lane's putting in a bit. Kazman to the very outside. And Mardan Seuss and Derzetta now looking for room along the inside. 200 to go. Babo Alexander. O'Malley's boy now streaks to them out wide here. Fritz is storming home and out wide. Tiaka Dancer. Big Fritz in front now from O'Malley's boy. Fritz in front. O'Malley's boy going after it on the post and nothing. Fritz, I think, a nose to O'Malley's boy. Then fellow Travelin Man was right behind them with Tiaka Dancer. Kazman, Bo Alexander, the next two. Then Der Zetta. They were followed home. Vain Anna. Back behind them then was uh, Golden Butterfly. Cullen gave in. Then Viner's Lane. And back also. Here.